Hey everybody, Steve Burns here. We're gonna get into actually taking textures, applying them to a photograph to give them that realistic effect of the texture being an integral part of that photograph. Now that we understand how and why layer blend modes work, let's kind of use our heads and understand how we need to manipulate this particular texture um, that I took over in Death Valley um, of crackling mud. You kind of get in a little closer to it. You can kind of, it's uh, not a high res file, but what I would like you to do for your homework assignments when you actually apply textures is to create your own textures or photograph your own textures uh, to be applied to a photograph. All right, now this is how we should be thinking. If you remember, dealing with layer blend modes have to do with dealing with shadows, midtones, and highlights, a value system. In this particular image, we it's in RGB, but we have a little bit of color. So let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. And what I would like to do is take the color out. In other words, I want this crackling texture to dominate an image to look as if it's part of this uh, crackling wall. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the other image that we're gonna be working with here. And I'm gonna go open it up actually. Let's go to open it up and let's go right down here. And we're gonna grab this image right here, okay? So we're gonna add some of that crackling texture um, to integrate with this particular wall, this graffiti painted wall. All right, let's go back to our texture. I've duplicated the texture. The first thing I'm gonna do is desaturate it to take the color out. The shortcut for that is Command or Control, Shift and U. And there it is, we've taken the color out. Now I'm going to modify this so that these brighter values, these brighter highlights are gonna go fairly white or fairly bright while the darker values are going to be maintained. Now what I could do is apply a layer blend mode to itself. Now I can duplicate the layer, apply the blend mode and then merge it, but that would be a little extra work, right? There's an easier way to do it. If your intention is to make a blend, duplicate the layer and make a blend mode and then merge it so you're only dealing with one layer, it's better to go through your image, apply image command because it does just that. Now, what this is doing is I'm taking the image and applying it to itself and I'm going to put it in normal blend mode so you can see exactly what we've had um, from the very beginning. So the layer is the one that I'm I have here, I'm, I'm gonna utilize, I'm using all of my RGB channels or I can utilize individual channels to blend. But in this case, we're gonna use all, all three because I want values applied. And if I go to my layer blend modes, I can apply things like multiply. So it's the same thing as we as duplicating the layer and then that duplicated layer on the top, we're changing it to multiply and this is what we're going to get. But what Photoshop does is applies it directly to the layer without having, a, having to do all those extra steps of duplicating. So in this case, I think what I would like to do is, is to try and overlay. There we go. That's making my blacks blacker and my whites whiter. I could go to soft light to make a subtle or I can try something like hard light, which does a pretty good job as well. Let me take a look at that overlay once again. It's very similar to hard light, right? All right, I'm gonna click okay and, and, and I'm not quite done. If I get in close here, I still have a lot of mid-tone information. I wanna make this a little brighter because I really want these, these cracks to integrate, but I don't want all the extra mid-tone to be part of the photograph. Image menu, apply image once again. That does a much better job. Or let's try screen this time. See, that brightens it up quite a bit, right? That does a much better job. And I think I'm going to go with this. Now remember, your opacity here, I can actually click on the word opacity and slide it to the left and apply various you know, percentages of that screen. But the screen looks like it's doing pretty good. If I get in a little closer, pretty much the highlights are getting washed out, which is exactly what I want there. Now, let's go apply this to our photograph. Let's see what effect we can get from this. Hit the F key so I can see all three of them. And 
Let's go to my windows, arrange, and tile vertically. Let's take this one, hit the V key for the move tool, drag this on over to here on top of it, and I'm gonna close out this layer. I don't need it anymore. Hit the F key to go to full screen mode. All right, so my, my um, texture is pretty small. That's all right, I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge it. Target the right layer, Command T, and let's go ahead and just make it a little larger like so. And target OK. Now, ideally, you want your texture to be the same size as your image, but for this, for tutorial purposes, um, this will work. Now, let's look at our blend modes. Currently, it's a normal. Now, what I the goal here is to keep the darker areas, but make the highlights go transparent. Okay, so let's actually accomplish that. Go to our drop down menu. So, which one of these do you think is that we want to use? It's going to be the darken area, right? Maintain the blacks, everything else goes transparent. So, when I hit darken, there we are. Okay, did a pretty darn good job. If you get in close, it looks like it's actually part of that wall. Okay, pretty nice. All right, now. We can try the blend modes. Let's try some of some of the other ones. I'm gonna get in a little closer here. Drop down on this set of darkness. Let's try multiply. Oh, now multiply definitely applies more of those darker areas. So if I go back to darken, see, there's some other little darker spots that weren't applied as strongly, but multiply will absolutely grab them all and bring them in. That looks even more realistic, actually. Okay, really integrates it very well. So both textures are becoming unified. Let's go ahead and take a look at some others. Color burn, in my opinion, a little bit too much contrast. Linear burn, not bad, but it's, it's making the image a little bit too dark. And of course, if I can go to darker color, not bad, but again, this doesn't look as realistic. So I'm thinking maybe multiply is gonna be our best bet here. Either that or darken. Okay, darken might be able to work as well. I'm gonna to go to multiply in this case. All right, there we are. Now we can apply a layer mask to the texture, don't forget. And we can, and we can actually decide where to apply it to and where not to apply it to. But this gives you a, a, a good understanding how to um, um, quickly modify your texture so that um, your image is going to integrate really well. Now keep in mind that if it's highlights you wanna keep instead of the shadows, then you wanna go toward the lighten. And you can see what happens. Now if we go to screen, color dodge, so the brighter areas are being favored. So, so that you understand what's happening here, I'm gonna go back to multiply. And, and, and sometimes in the future, you may want to work with the textures where you want to enhance the highlights. So now let's go, now after this, let's go ahead and talk about how to um, use a brush, use textures to create a brush that you can use to stamp on localized imagery.